Hello and welcome to Inside Magazine. I'm David Matlin. Well, a little less than a year ago, refugees were in the headlines of most newspapers on a daily basis. Their mass arrival in Europe and the challenges they had to overcome moved a great number of people. Then their large numbers started to scare people, and Europe was torn trying to decide the quotas each country would welcome. But today, the refugees' integration is at the center of the debate. The recent events in Cologne on New Year's Eve have made the authorities take a stronger stand, while at the same time masking the still urgent need for humanitarian help. According to predictions, by the end of 2016, 3 million refugees will have managed to flee the atrocities in their homelands and enter the European Union. The journey is still so very dangerous and complicated. More than ever, many NGOs have been trying to help them. While I-24 News went to the border between Macedonia and Serbia, a path to Europe once open but now closed to refugees. In the midst of the chaos, we met volunteers, among them a group of Israeli doctors and social workers, Arabs and Jews working side by side to help those who need it most. On the way to exile, a film by Tommy Harrell for I-24 News. a.m. on the border between Macedonia and Serbia. Outside, the temperature is zero degrees Celsius. Hundreds of people, men, women, and children, are crossing the border. Where did you come from? And where do you want to go? One more step in the long journey that started in Syria, Iraq, and Afghanistan en route to a new home, Europe. At the same time, 3,200 kilometers or 1,988 miles away, Dr. Kamil Malachi, who lives in Haifa, is packing his suitcase. In a few hours, he will be leaving for Serbia. To tell the truth, I am very excited. This trip means a lot to me. It is the first time I'm taking part in a humanitarian expedition. And I'm going to meet so many people, patients as far as I'm concerned. And I'm really motivated to go and give the best of me, which is helping people. For the refugees, the journey starts in the Middle East and North Africa through Turkey and continues by boat to Greece. There, those who are considered economic migrants are separated from those who are considered refugees. Only Syria, Iraq, and Afghanistan nationals are allowed to proceed towards Macedonia and Serbia. After a difficult walk of five kilometers between the Macedonian side and the Serbian side of the border, they get to rest a little before getting on the buses that will take them to a registration camp in the village of Preshevo. Where did you come from? Iraq. Iraq? Yes. With all your family? Yes. Farah. Farah? Farah. Yes, yes, Farah. <laughs> Dr. Kamil Malachi is just about to join a team sent by Natan, an NGO which sends physicians and social workers, Jews and Arabs alike, to crisis-stricken zones everywhere in the world. How are you? Good. I'm good. Motivated. Good to see you after all these preparations. Ready to go. The rest of the group is waiting for you. There's a lot of work to do. It's a big advantage to have you with us, since you speak Arabic. For missions and people sent there, it's a big plus to have mixed teams of Arabs and Jews in order to do a good job. I'm here to offer my best energies and contribute whatever I can. Bon voyage!
Preshevo registration camp. The procedure that the refugees need to go through recalls assembly line work. Their luggage is checked, they go through a security gate, any knife or weapons discovered are taken away. The refugees find shelter in a large tent set up here as protection against the freezing cold. The refugees hurry. They want to get out of it as fast as possible and get on the buses that will take them to Croatia. Rumors are circulating about an imminent closing of the border, and they don't want to be stuck here. They barely take a few minutes to sit and chat a bit after procuring food and warm clothes. We uh, pass uh, from Syria to Lebanon, uh, and uh, we pass from Lebanon uh, to Turkey by ship, uh, and we stay at uh, Turkey three days. Uh, there we, uh, we, uh, we, we know the agent uh, that we uh, buy it, uh, we pass uh, the ship. One person paid uh, 700 dollars, uh, one uh, person uh, paid uh, 500 one person paid one thousand dollars. Yeah, yeah, from Macedonia, from Macedonia to Serbia, to Albania, to Serbia. Yeah, we walk, we walk four kilometers. Yeah, in the in the cold weather. We are not economic refuge at all. At all. We want to live free. We want to express uh, our opinion free. That's we want to live uh, the, uh, the life. Yeah, peacefully. Among the thousands of refugees who every day transit by the camp are sick or wounded people as well as elderly. It is for them that the Israeli organization Natan established this field clinic. What does she need? What can be done with her now? She needs to be treated immediately. She's fine. It's just some coughing. He says that she is stable, that she has just some coughing. She has these grunts. Yes. In a small RV-like facility with a few filing cabinets full of medicine, two beds and minimal medical means, Israeli doctors offer first aid type of care to refugees to help them continue their long journey. Camille, who just landed from Israel, is soon ready to treat his first patients. A whole wave of emotions. This is a small window, but it is meaningful. It's not like a TV show. From here I watch reality. I feel very touched when I see them passing through this window. I belong to a medical team, and people who come here as refugees they have nothing left, so I feel that I can do a lot to help them, and it fills me with joy. Where are you from? From Sinjar. What is the situation there right now? Because of Daesh. I don't have a home anymore. IS has confiscated my house. Don't smoke, please. Well, I understood only half of it. Did you fall? Did you get hurt? Do you smoke? Smoking is not allowed. Totally forbidden. Forbidden. Thank you, thank you. The most important thing we are doing here is diagnose dangerous sicknesses that require them to stop and have medical tests performed or to be hospitalized for a while. We also distribute antibiotics to the children who have strong fever, tonsillitis or ear infections. The kind of things that can help them continue their journey. There is also a big part of support medicine, that is, reassuring them that everything is fine, that they are not seriously ill, that they can continue. A large part of what we distribute is placebo and comforting words. Do you tell them that you come from Israel? Yes. I do. There has never been any negative reaction. They don't mind where we come from. 
They come from chaos. They're just happy that we help them. We have no problem with the doctors, but uh, we have a problem with the government uh, Israel. Yeah, but we have uh, no problem with the people, with the Israel people. There's one more step before the refugees can leave the camp, the local police station, where each of them is given a permit allowing them a maximum 72-hour stay in Serbian territory. When they get this permit, they're allowed to get on a bus or a train. You are going to the bus? Yeah. To take you to where? Uh, Croatia. Okay. Okay. Good luck. Good luck. Thank Good you. Bye-bye. Good, 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 Good luck. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Goodbye. Yesterday, I waited with them at the train station. There were 300 people waiting. The train arrived. People got on the train full of expectations, and you stay here wondering what kind of life awaits them. Not all of them are crude or poor people. Among them are educated people who have a good command of English, who had a very good life before in their own country and wish to return there as soon as it's possible. Already one million people have accessed Germany and two more million are on the way. So you wonder, what will they be able to do there? The day is ending. The refugees have resumed their journey. Tomorrow, others will arrive here. And there are also all these people who've been here for months, far from home, hardcore volunteers. Among them is Gal Yofe, the Natan Expedition Coordinator. It is a historic landmark, an event that will impact on Europe and the whole world. I believe in involvement. I cannot just stand aside and watch what is going on. These are people who were forced to flee their homes and start from scratch. I want to be part of it. I want to do the best I can to help them get through all of this as smoothly as possible. In the Israeli humanitarian mission is not the only one. In every corner are aid organizations, NGOs, individuals from all over the world who came to assist them. Volunteers are like a beam of light in the darkness of the catastrophe the refugees are living in. Uh, my father came here two months ago, in the beginning of the crisis, and when he came back, he, he explained to us everything, and we thought, ah, oh, we, we want to help too, everyone in the family, the four of us, my sister, I, my mother and my father, we all wanted to help, even if it's just little thing like, uh, like serving food and, and chai here in the town. So. In this area on the border between Macedonia, Kosovo, and Serbia, a bloody war broke out 16 years ago. Thousands of Albanians were forced to flee Serbia and seek refuge in Macedonia. Among them was Valon Arifi, who a few months ago established an aid organization for refugees. Thank you. Uh, in the same road that they are coming, I left my, my town. The uh, citizens in Freshima, I think that maybe more than 70% left their country in that time. Uh, and I think that for that, they are uh, like understanding them when they come around here. For now, I'm more motivated after the terrorist attack in Paris, in France. Even all the world need to understand that the enemy of these people is the same like for us. Like for France or everything. It's there, it's happening one night, but in Syria and another country, it's happening every day for more than three years. Such a deduction, the world has not yet been able to make it, perhaps, that the enemy who hit Paris is the same that is hitting Syria every day. And what about the world? The world prefers to take care of the refugee problem rather than deal with very serious reasons that have been causing this problem. Uh, we have strong governments in the world, but just when they are looking around what is going on, 
uh, without taking any actions. If United States, America, and Russia, and China, and the other country want to stop the war, the war will stop. Yes, we expect from Europe, not just only from America and United States, I expect from European countries also to play a role to solve this uh, difficult situation, difficult, complicated situation in Syria. Well, that's all for this episode of Insight, brought to you from I-24 News and the Jaffa Port of Israel. I'm David Matlin. Thank you for joining us.